So, hello and welcome everyone. I'm Insane and this is the first episode of Inside the Studio. So, what is this about? This is about me showing about a bit of me doing something with the music. Uh, and I have spoilers right now that actually <laughs> they are recorded in two parts. So, me talking is in a different part than the actual video because I tried to make this earlier today with me talking while doing the song but it just didn't work out i mean my brain's my brain won't work like that i mean i will just have like five minute pauses when i just listen to the music because uh my brain just switches to listening to it but yeah it's about doing that then i'm going to talk about what's going on in my life and obviously i'm going to be talking about what's happening in the hardstyle scene Regarding the hardstyle scene, I have to say that I don't actually follow it that actively, so I might miss quite a lot of stuff, but I will try to maybe activate myself more around it. And the show should be, I mean, I'm trying to make it so that I'm doing it maybe every week or maybe every second week or something like that. It remains to be seen about, well, first of all, how much stuff I get to, I mean, how much I have to talk about, maybe. But yeah, this speaking hopefully won't be happening every time because it's awkward. So now this uh, this episode's topics, which are first of all the reason why there's not much coming out from me around these days, which is that I'm doing my thesis or thesis. I don't know how it's said. Or I will maybe it's more obvious if I say that it's my final project in the school. So once it's it is done, I'm finally free from this studying thing. Uh, yeah. Then, the second thing we are talking about is about the new songs. Then, after we have, ah, we have finished talking about my personal life, we'll go to Heart Base 2013. And the biggest thing that has happened in Heart Style scene in, since, I don't know, maybe since Show the Cleft or something. Uh, which is obviously that Headhunters has signed with Ultra Recording or Records. <sighs> but yeah, let's go. So, first of all, the thesis. Um, yeah, I'm doing it. I can't say the company name, but I'm doing a programming work because, as some of you may know, I hope that I'm studying in inform uh, IT field. And more specifically, I have been studying programming. So. Obviously, I will do my final work uh, as a program. Well, it's I'm going to use. I mean, it's going to be a what is it called framework between. I mean, it's done between AdWords and then the company's uh, what is this called database. I will do a match in there so the data comes from AdWords and then it's written to the database. This is actually. When I got the project out of the tool, well, this is easy. I mean, they have the API and everything, so it's going to be easy to just make it. But the fact is that AdWords API is not as open as, let's say, the Google Maps API is, because it's so commercially uh, linked that they don't talk about it. They don't give the API keys to everyone. I mean, you have to apply to it, and it takes, like, six weeks for them to give you them which is a hell of a lot of time i mean right now i'm just waiting i can't do anything before i get the keys but anyways yeah it's going to take a lot of time i i started this in maybe the second week of january and i have done like too much <laughs> too many hours on it already i have about 11 pages of it written right now and I should have at least twice as much once it's done. But the bigger part is about programming it. I have done a couple of things already with the program, but I don't know how much it's going to be actually needing stuff because I can obviously try them. I mean, I have done the getting data, I have done creating the data database, and I have done the deleting of files, but I can actually try any of this before I get the data from AdWords. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I tried to use the test account, but when I tried to add new user, uh, no, not new users, but campaigns, it doesn't work, and then when I asked about it in the 
Google groups, they, they didn't know the answer, but yeah. So, because of this, obviously my time will be limited. I mean, I'm trying to make this thesis like 8 hours a day, which is obviously going to be the area of time when there's light outside and I am alone at home. So, uh, th I mean, that is the optimal time of me doing some stuff because I can use my big, huge speakers, which you may have seen in the videos. <sighs> Yeah, I'll try to do some stuff which comes next, which are the new songs. Yes, there are some, um, I don't remember what I showed you last time and I showed you some old, I mean new and upcoming stuff, they might have been dropped already, but yes, they are, I mean the biggest problem is that many of them are the sort of stuff that I can actually show to you, because one very cool track is going to be done for the Reload Game Festival and it's going to be something totally different from what I've done it's going to be more raw style and I think this video which is playing in the background and you probably hear the sounds should contribute to it uh, I mean it's going to be having the same sort of lead spoilers and stuff it's going to be awesome if I actually get the time to finish it that's the thing. Then the second track is a gabber or hardcore remix for of an instrument <laughs> industrial metal song, which is for Shift Records. Uh, yeah, it's an awesome group of guys. Uh, the song is hard because I don't listen to metal. I don't listen to industrial, so it's hard to switch to. I mean, it's hard to get feeling right because. Yeah, but it's sounding good. I mean, I've done about two minutes of it now and it sounds awesome. I just have to do like the intros and outros and then the first, like the silent part. That's about it. <laughs> well, that's about 75% of the song, but yeah, anyways. Then the third one is a remix of a classical song for the summer. I mean, it's for my sister's wedding, so obviously I can't show it to you because it's a gift. <laughs> oh, I spoil it. Oh, well. But, well, she knows it too because she requested it. But yeah. Then I have, which is probably going to be the biggest news of this, my, my new stuff, is that I'm doing also a, a hyper melodic one, a euphoric one, a hard cell song. And I might try to send it to a label. I mean, it's starting to sound out that good. So, <laughs> obviously, if I'm doing that, I can show it to you now. I'm going to be sending it out to some people. If you want to be one of them, so just say it, and I will, once it's about done. But, do note, if I do send it to you, I really want some good, like, comments about it. Not just like, yeah, this sounds good, because... I'm, I want to tweak it so much that I actually, uh, I mean, I'm confident that I can send it to them. I will be talking about it more next time I'll do a video about this, but yeah, I can show it to you yet. But hopefully if it gets through, you'll get to hear it one way or another. Or another. Um, yeah, then I also have been doing some experimental stuff. <laughs> it's, well, one is for example a remix of um, an old and ancient Finnish song, like from 1940s I think it was actually, or something like that. It's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds all pretty nice, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I will do it, maybe I don't. Oh, and now, before I move to hard base, I have to say thank you guys, because, yeah, I got 300 followers now. Uh, I was thinking about doing a song for that, I mean, I did one for 100, I skipped 200 because I almost have done it, I mean, I've gone over it in BPM. I thought about doing one for 300, but oh my god, I have, didn't have time for that. And then I tried, maybe if I did a 300 version from Rig YM, but it didn't, didn't, didn't really sound too good, so I didn't do it. Sorry guys, I will try to do something, I will probably put a nice vocal stuff or something out, because it is quite special, uh, yeah. Uh, you also might have noticed, I don't know if it's been visible before, but there might be some ads in the videos now, because I actually got a request to monetize it. 
so I did. <laughs> I mean, why not? If it helps to get some more viewers for my channel, then I will do it. And I mean, it's. I mean, I'm not obviously doing it for the money because I would get like what a five, five cents every half a year. So it's not anything big. But if it helps to get the channel out there more, then I'm all into it. And I mean, I did do it so that you won't be getting any of the before or after video advertisements. There are just the pop-ups that come in the screen, but obviously those won't affect listening to the music, which is the main point of it. And yeah, I also did it because th that gives me more power on what I can do. So I mean, I can put the um, uh, thumbnail and everything, stuff like that now. So it's only a good thing, I think. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's move on. So, heart base. Yes, it was uh, it's one of those big, I don't know how many shows Defcon has, I mean, you dance these, these days, but it's one of the biggest ones, and it's one of the coolest ones because it's a bit different. You probably, or well, everyone know about it, but it's about four, well, this year, three guys mixing together all the time. I mean, there's one and a half hours of the three groups, <laughs> as you may say it. Uh, mixing the stuff together and then there was one guy doing a half an hour live set and yeah I mean really that was a serious cool event I obviously wasn't there uh, hopefully I will be in some of these events soon uh, and yes I am over 80 that's not the thing it's just that I don't have the time or the money to do it because it's quite expensive to come to uh, wherever they were the events uh, but yeah this event, the hard base is <laughs> like the, the one show that all, every year restores my faith back to hardstyle because this, I mean last fall I again was almost ready to drop hardstyle because oh my god that was bad last fall. Like in 2010 and 2011 it was saved by some awesome raw style tracks but this year they really didn't have even those. Uh, some guys are hyping about uh, uh, Bohe no Bohemian Bolivia song but I don't feel like that too much and then the euphoric stuff as you may call it has become quite generic I mean there was I don't know it it sounds almost like uh, what should I say 2008 2009 when people were just using the triplet arpeggios that's pretty much what it sounded like I mean there was ah oh, it was bad I don't like it. So yeah, I was pretty much ready to just drop everything. But hard base kind of turned it around, maybe at least for a while. Yeah, I didn't hear the first set, which was yellow, I think, because I joined the stream quite late. I mean, I joined when the blue group was in there already. But let's let's first talk about the red set because that was just amazing. I mean, it had red and hard. Shadox and Psycho Punks in there, which it's it's a pretty cool cool group. I I'm not the biggest fan of Psycho Punks. I don't know. They have such such a similar style in their songs quite often, so I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I know I know I, my songs have also very similar style in all of them, but that's my bad. But yeah, but it had Shadox, which is one of those big names that I have followed from since the beginning or something. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and then it had the uh, Shadox remix of Benas, Benny Benas' Illusion, which was just some pure of, ooh, bleh, awesomeness. Because that was one of those first songs, as you may say, that I heard outside of the radio stuff. I mean, the electronic stuff that was played in Finnish radios. And yeah, it was, I mean, it was amazing track of 10 already. And I still don't know how, I mean, I do know how Benazza does it, but some reason, for, I mean, for some reason, he has the loudness in the songs that <laughs> wasn't there back then. I mean, it, it is there these days, but somehow he managed to do it back then already, which is quite amazing. And the song, The Illusion, is still one of my real favorites. So it was cool to hear it. Uh, it was a great remix and I hope it gets released in one form or another. Uh, I know that Shadox just put today a clip of it in YouTube or maybe it was someone else's. But I hope he actually makes a complete version of it. Make a complete version of it because it is awesome. Uh, 
yeah then obviously i joined in the stream when blue set was playing but it was quite dull really i mean because i think it was meant to be an euphoric uh set because the first two are mostly about well the first is about being pro euphoric and then the second is a bit more about not that euphoric and then the third one is about this energetic style and then the last one is just pure let's rip your ears out because it's so loud but yeah the blue one didn't really work because i mean oh, because well it had frontliner which is pure uh, euphoric style i could say i mean it, he does have that uh, raw elements there but it is euphoric melodic stuff uh but then it had tatanka in it <laughs> which is like <laughs> those two just don't mix together at all that's the thing i mean tatanka, tatanka has melodic stuff but it's mostly about more i mean it's more pure italic stuff not while frontliner is pure uh dutch stuff then they have to have the third name which i can't actually remember <laughs> right <now. laughs> yeah and then because man this events are so late so i had to actually go to sleep because it was about seven when guns for hire finished so i didn't get to hear the green set which apparently was the best set at least what i heard from people over the internet or that might also be because the hero style people seem to be more vocal about being hard style listeners i don't know <laughs> yeah but i do think that i will i will i probably have to download the set and burn it to cd to listen to it while i drive to school or something like that to check it out because the raw style is cool i like it the, the yellow one i won't be listening because the lineup wasn't that special and it had wasted penguins in it spoilers i don't really like their style uh but yeah i also have to check out the lives by noise controllers because i heard their live in exclusive noise control controllers which was just amazing i mean it was great it was something quite different so if it was anything even close to that it should be good but yeah as you probably may know if you follow hardstyle scene at all uh there was also this thing that some people want to call a farce which obviously was that um, the guys running hard base decided to broadcast the thing for free in uh, youtube so it got quite a lot of attention uh and i mean it's amazing i mean it gives a chance for us not non-dutch or belgium or whoever who are not there who don't have the chance to get there because the tickets are sold like in i don't know a day uh it gives them a chance to hear it and i mean see it that seeing part is even more important because hearing i don't like to listen to the web streams because i don't care i mean after i've done like <laughs> eight hours of music stuff with i mean myself it, i don't really care about listening to the stuff but seeing the event and everything was quite amazing but yeah obviously because it was done like this there were some issues with new songs and this was quite I don't know, maybe it happened during noise controllers too, but no one talked about it. But uh, then came the Headhunter set, which was after about 10 minutes of playing cut for 10 minutes, because Headhunters was playing some of his new songs. And I think it's cool. I mean, yeah, obviously the shitstorm began. Uh, that was really <laughs> what was happening in the chat. It was just going batshit insane at the moment. Everyone would be like, what the f***? Because, yeah. I mean, it was quite obvious that many people were there because of headhunters. And I think people were quite overreacting it. Uh, I think, I mean, why do I think that people were there for headhunters? Was because, well, first of all, many people were like that, yeah, only... 10 minutes or x minutes until headhunters will play and the viewer amount at that time before i mean before headhunters showed up and during when he came was around 11,000 viewers which is quite nice i mean it's if they had 30,000 people entered then that was there i mean an additional port in it so yeah headhunters came headhunters blocked the video people left <laughs> i mean i mean after that during the red states there were about six thousand viewers 
also about health them left because of headhunters. Maybe it was because of the cut, which was kind of silly because that was 10 minutes out of, I don't know, what was it, about 6 hours of music. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you can't bear being out of the stuff for 10 minutes and too bad, maybe you shouldn't even be in the chat, I mean, maybe you shouldn't even be a fan at that stage. Because you are getting the music for free, you are not actually paying to be there. So yeah, was the cut okay? Yes, it was. I mean, uh, the bad thing is that this time Headhunters had to take the shit on himself. There's quite obviously those tracks were made, but they were remixes of Ultra Records stuff, I think. Uh, someone has to correct me if, it, if this is wrong, because I don't care. Uh, but yeah, obviously if the label has said that no, you can't do it, then that's pretty much what is going to happen. And I mean, uh, it's, I think it's better to have like 6 hours of music, I mean almost 6 hours of music, instead of not having it at all. I mean 6 hours that is cut, that is than not having at all. And I mean they didn't even have any advertisements in the between like the radios them to have, so it wasn't cut at all, except for these parts. Besides, actually this stream was also cut during Guns For Hire because they did the same thing. They had some new songs coming in, they didn't want them to be played on the radio and it was cut. I mean, I mean the thing is that the stream was very good quality. I mean it was, uh, I think it was 720p. So it was very good regarding its its live stream and the sound quality was pretty good, not like from CD or anything like that. But with a little bit of editing, post editing, if you added some bass and maybe some treble, you could have made it, made it almost like <laughs> authentic, I could say. I mean, the thing is that most people who listen to the music have just those shitty 10 euro earplugs or 10 some... Oh dude, I have some Log Logitech... I don't know what, what numbers they have. I don't know, some random number, which actually are not that good, so they won't even notice if it is like a rip or if it is a legit song from a CD. Uh, yeah. Besides, I wouldn't really like if my songs were in the internet before I had actually put them there in my, I mean, there myself. I would be pretty frustrated. I mean, I do give some songs for people before, like if they request them, I try to give them before. But if I see like someone, if, I mean, this hasn't obviously happened yet, but if someone would put it there, I obviously wouldn't give them any more stuff after that because fuck you guy. Uh, but yeah, this brings us to. Heady heady head 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 heady head 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 Oh my god, that thing is just so <laughs> bad too Uh, yeah, obviously the biggest news of this week and probably, yeah, since Shota Cleft is that Headhunter signed with Ultra Recording Or Records uh. As you may know, Ultra has pretty much all of the biggest EDM or electronic dance music names under their wings right now. They have guys like David Guetta, uh, Tiesto, Perry Corsten, and pretty much everyone else that has, has or are right now on the top. And yeah, obviously they like, I think Tiesto also has his own label, but yeah, they release some stuff under Ultra and some not. Uh, but yeah, now they signed the biggest name in hard, hard dance scene. I mean, quite obviously, hard Headhunters is the only one that got through in the United States, and that is quite big. I mean, sure, guys like noise controllers or I don't remember, other guys have been in the United States, but they don't have the same amount of knowledge. I mean, yeah, fame maybe, because. If you look at the amount of viewers in Headhunter's song and then compare it with yeah, noise controllers, there's about 3 million millions of difference in the viewers. Uh, yeah. It's partly because the songs are remixes these days from Headhunters, but it's also partly because he has the followers in the United States, which is a pretty big market if you get them there, because electronic music is such a small scene in the United States after all. I mean, it's not, uh, well, obviously the number amount is big, but it is not like what we have in Europe, because in Europe it is big, even if Finland it doesn't. Uh, yeah. 
but still, I mean, getting such a big back up is quite amazing. But obviously, once people heard about his deal, everyone in the internet went all, oh, he's such a sellout, you love no music, and stuff like that. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, artists, or <laughs> I could say no one actually loves music, because men, you can't put a dick around music, women, you can't shove music in you. So, <laughs> I mean, if you can't do that, you probably can't even love it. You may like it, but you may not love it. I talked about this earlier in the Insane Answers videos, where I talked about Shotek doing the same thing. Uh, the same might happen here. I won't deny it. I mean, it may happen that Shade Hunters leaves the scene, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, wah, who cares? I mean, the thing is, you won't die if he leaves the scene. You won't be getting a heart attack because he leaves. Well, maybe you might have that. But you won't, like, get a seizure and fall to the ground and that's it. Because you hear that, oh no, he did something not hard style. But yeah, if Headhunters wants to do it, let him do it. I mean, it's not out of you, it's not out of me, it's not out of him if he leaves the scene. In fact, I think it might even be better if he did leave because... Once a big, when one big name leaves the scene, it gives a chance for, I don't know, maybe five new names to get, I mean, try to get to the spotlight. Because, as you may have noticed, the scene in Hearthstyle is pretty much dominated by some 10, 20 names, and it's pretty hard to get there. So, if one big name from the, I don't know, fuck buddy ring leaves, then it probably gives space for more people to join the body ring, I don't know. Besides, we haven't really heard <laughs> any new songs from him under the new label. There are the new remixes coming from him, but those you can't really call remixes your own songs. I mean, I wouldn't call them, I wouldn't call my remixes my own songs, because they're not my songs, they're remixes from someone else's songs. So we have to wait and hear if he ever makes his own songs anymore. Because, quite frankly, he has only been doing some remixes since... Uh... Forever. But yeah. Uh, give him a bit of slack. Wait for maybe 6 to 12 months to find out what happens. If he stays in the ski scene, well, that's cool. If he leaves the ski scene, that's cool too. I mean, that's fine. It, that won't change anything, really. Uh, you still have the old songs that you seem to love, you still have maybe the old sets you seem to love, but you maybe won't be getting new stuff from him, which doesn't matter, because you don't know if it, he would have been any good, even if he stood in the genre. I mean, even if he didn't get the, the signing deal with Ultra. And no, I'm not going to be, I mean, I'm not trying to be a white knight here, because I actually don't like it. Hunters, I never have. I mean, he's cool, he has good skills, I won't deny that. But I never felt it in his songs, that's the thing. Uh, they never blew my mind. They, some of his songs have good parts, but they never are, like, amazing from beginning to end. They're not, like, I don't know. I have to say Chadox because his songs quite often are cool from beginning to end. Uh, but yeah, if he came to Finland, I probably wouldn't go even to listen to him because uh, I don't care. Anyways, yeah, give him some slack. And yeah, I mean, the other cool thing that might happen now is that because he leaves, there's no one to actually take the space in the United States. So. This might actually cut the ties again, which I'm sorry for United. I mean, my fans in the United States, but this might be cool for the genre. I mean, obviously you will be getting less people in there, probably. I don't know, but the scene might get back to. Um, I mean, it might be more about what Italians and the Dutch want here, because right now it has been going towards towards what the people in the United. Kingdom and United States want to hear. Uh, I'm obviously saying United Kingdom here because they tend to have also a bit different way they like to hear the songs. I mean, they are still in the hard house scene so much, I think. But yeah, I guess that's enough of me rambling. My voice is starting to break. My throat is hurting. So, this was insane. What do I call this thing? 
Inside the Studio, Episode 1. I'm Insane and I'm out. Bye bye.